Welcome students to tutorials point. Let's get started with entity framework. So the first step in working with entity framework is to get started with creating our domain models and we will jump to Visual Studio to see how do we do that. So as part of the video tutorial series on working with entity framework, we need to work with six different things like creating models, creating controllers, creating context classes and seeding your database adding migrations and then adding DTOs. So before we get started with all of these things, we will try to understand what is Entity Framework and why we need to work with Entity Framework. So Entity Framework is an object relational mapper or it is an ORM software that enables .NET developers to work with relational data using domain specific objects. Okay, so it basically what it does is it eliminates the need for most of the data access code that developers usually need to write. Okay, so basically there are three different approaches to entity framework over here. Okay, so the first one is code first approach where you basically write models in terms of code um, like uh, C sharp code and entity framework will generate the database for us. And the second thing is a database first approach where we basically have our database and entity framework will basically generate the models for us. And the third is uh, specifying the models with the help of a diagrammat diagrammatic schema and entity framework will generate both the database and models for us. In this video tutorial series, we will stick mostly to code first approach where we will specify the models in the code in Visual Studio. So let's jump back to Visual Studio and get started with creating a new project and creating models. In the Visual Studio, go to File, New Project. In the New Project window, basically we are going to work with ASP.NET Web Application. Okay, so select this ASP.NET web application under the web section and just name this particular project as employees and click OK. In this dialog box, select web API project as we are going to work with web API and select OK. It takes some time for the project to get created. So now we have ASP.NET Web API project template. So before we proceed to basically work with Entity Framework, I want to take a step back and differentiate what we are doing now and how it is different from the earlier project that we had created. In the earlier project, we basically hard coded the data into our controllers. So the data basically came from our controllers and that's not the way the real world works. In the real world implementations, the data usually comes from a database. So in this video tutorial series, we are basically going to concentrate on working with the data from the database using entity framework. So as I said, the first step is to create a model. So let me go back to Visual Studio and if you see here, there is a folder called models and right click on models folder and go to add new class. In the add new item window, just add an employee class. I have already prepared the model for employee. So let me replace the class employee with what I have already prepared. And if you see here, the employee class has just two properties. The first one is the ID. The entity framework recognizes this ID as the primary key in the database. And the second one is a name. And we have one annotation called required. So this annotation basically applies to this particular property, which means that the user needs to key in this particular value. Okay. So right now it shows a red squiggle that's because we have not imported the data annotations namespace. So what you can do is you can go to this light bulb and say import data annotations namespace. Once it is imported the red squiggle goes away. So now we have created our first domain model. 
in the same way let me create one another model within the models folder so right click on the models folder and say add a new class in the add new item window just name the file as office.cs and in the office.cs file just replace the code with what I have already prepared okay and then let me import the namespace called data annotations just that the red squiggle goes away and in this office model I have an ID which is been identified as a primary key by the entity framework in the database and I have a property called location which is required okay so if you do not give any values to this particular property our model will invalidate as not correct and then what I have is here is that a foreign key that is basically pointing to the ID property within the employee class okay so this is the foreign key that will be generated okay and it just points to the employee class or employee table and I have a navigation property over here okay so this is different from this where this is just a foreign key to the employee table and this is just a navigation property and you can use this property to basically load employee entity into your office class so we will look at more of these details later just know that this is a navigation property and you can read both office and employee together with the help of this navigation property and that's it we have created our models and what we will do is we will go ahead with the creation of more sophisticated entity framework and that is it we have created our employee and office models thank you tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning